That is God's love, amen. Amen, sir. That greater love hath no man than this. That a man would lay down his life for his friend. Jesus Christ said, I lay down my life. That I may take it up again. No one takes it from me. I'm Israelite. But I lay down the same thing. Of my own heart. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is Yahweh. So we should not believe that Jesus Christ is God. You have perished in your sin. That means the Muslims, the Mayans, the Jehovah's Witnesses, who have perished in their sin because they do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. Yes, and I will challenge the Muslims, what is their authority? If the Muslim says anything about God, what is the Muslim's authority? Are you a Muslim? Well, neither am I. Neither am I. No, they don't believe in the same God. No, they don't. Let me ask you this. Can we start with the premise that two opposing truth claims cannot both be true? Yes or no? It depends. So you do not believe the laws of logic are absolute? No, then they are. Because you cannot refute me. The laws of logic are absolute. The Quran says in Surah 4157 that Jesus Christ did not die on a cross and rise from the dead. Jesus himself said, the Son of Man can suffer and die and be crucified and three days later rise from the dead. The Quran says, select the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed. The people of the gospel are Christians. Christians are to judge by what the Quran has revealed. And the Quran does not state that Jesus Christ is God. And it opposes utterly the true claims of Jesus Christ. Man, that finger was given to you by God. And you use that to blaspheme God. Why? Because you're full of sin, depravity. Jesus Christ said your heart is wicked, man. You're a Catholic? Okay, how does a Catholic get to heaven, ma'am? None of your business. None of your business. How does a Catholic get to heaven? Being a good person. I was, I was raised Catholic as well. Okay. So as a Catholic, if you died today, would it be heaven or hell? You don't know. Stephen, you don't have a savior. You don't have a savior. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He said, my, he said, my people hear the truth, and the truth will set you free. So that's why the practice is happening. You cannot claim to be saved. You cannot put your claim upon heaven because you don't have heaven as a Catholic. All you have is work. The Bible says a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Now. The Bible says, but to the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly the ungodly his faith is counted as righteousness therefore having been justified by faith you have peace with God because you and I our works will be seen as filthy rags before a holy God we cannot please God our works can bring your works before God your sacraments your praying to Mary whatever they are God will see those as filthy rags because God is holy Holy, holy. God demands perfection. Absolute perfection from cradle to grave. And all of us outside of Jesus Christ are full of sin from head to toe. We're nothing but sin. But the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, cleanses of all sin, amen, and unrighteousness. Jesus Christ came to save. God by nature is a savior. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. And that is who we preach here today. As Jesus Christ, he prayed to the Father. And he said, the time has come, Father. Glorify thy Son as thy Son glorifies you. As he was hung upon that cross, the Father poured out the wrath that you and I deserved upon his Son. And Jesus Christ took that wrath for those who love him, for those who believe in him, for those who worship him. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. He died and was buried in the tomb. And then he rose from the dead. He defeated death. He defeated hell for all those who believe in him. And as the scriptures declare, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, that if you confess with your mouth 
that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's why, as I was uh, speaking to uh, earlier, a man about Islam, the Muslim cannot confess Jesus Christ as Lord. The Jehovah's Witness cannot confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Therefore, they do not have eternal life because they are worshiping an idol god. They are worshiping a god that does not exist. The Bible says all the gods of the people are worthless idols, but the Lord is made to the heaven. But there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men. And hallelujah, it's the God-man, Jesus Christ. And you must humble yourself. God opposes the problem and he gives grace to them. Brandon, you've been here a long time. With the time I arrived, I saw you speaking to my brother, and you're still here. You know why you're here, Brandon? Because you know the truth. You cannot get away because your conscience condemns you and testifies that this is the circular reasoning absolutely fallacious, Brandon. It's circular reasoning absolutely fallacious. Yeah, read it, read it, Yes. Your claiming, your claim to us is that all we're doing is invoking circular reason. So my question to you, Brandon, is circular reasoning absolutely fallacious? Not necessarily. So then my reason about the Bible is true because my reason that it's true is not sufficient for you. No, why not? No, I'm saying you can't believe anything unless you begin with the Bible. I'm saying the Bible is true, and if you reject the Bible, you cannot account for truth. You cannot account for reason and logic. But what is your basis for truth? Evidence presupposes truth. You cannot prove something to be true that is false. So what is your foundation for truth? Your reasoning. How do you know your reasoning is valid? Do you posit your reasoning is the absolute standard of truth, Brandon? No, I'm asking you to justify anything you claim to know. And you're invoking your reasoning. I'm asking you, how do you know your reasoning is valid? You say, I reason that my reasoning is valid. Therefore, it's a viciously circular argument. Philosophically bankrupt. Therefore, you have no basis to judge anything to be true or false. Therefore, you cannot know anything. Unless you begin with the Bible. For God is perfect in knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In Jesus Christ are the cause that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. There is no way, no truth, no life apart from Jesus Christ. So in love, we love you guys. We are, we are not better people than any of you. We are better off because we're going to the place we do not deserve. And we are not getting what we do deserve, which is hell. Jesus spoke of hell more than heaven. It's a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth where the worm never dies and the fires never quench. And it's the place you're headed, Brandon, unless you turn and go the other way. Humble yourself before God. Confess your sins before Jesus Christ and he will save you. He's a savior. Hallelujah. He came to seek and to save the lost. Amen. So you're going the wrong way, Brandon. Your pride. Your, your pride for young man. And your pride will drop you straight to hell. Yep. Are you guys Christians over here? No, why not? What's keeping you? You don't believe in Jesus? Well, that belief is keeping you condemned now. The Bible says, he that believeth not is condemned already. So when you die, you'll have no excuse. But the Bible says, all men know that God exists. The one true living God is the same God that the Muslim knows. The same God that the Jehovah's Witness knows. But they suppress their knowledge and recreate a God in their own image. And Jesus Christ is God. And you're going to stand before him. The Bible says there is one lawgiver and judge, only one who is able to save and destroy, and his name is Jesus Christ. So we come here to preach the truth of Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ died on a cross, although he was sinless. Without sin, he was tempted in all things like you and I. Yet without sin, yet he was crucified the sinner's death. Although without sin, Jesus Christ became sin, took that sin upon himself. He who knew no sin became sin. He was wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Hallelujah! What love is this? No greater love than a man who lay down his life for his friends. And yet so many reject so great love, so great a salvation. But you want to go your own way. You want your sin so much. You cling to this sin. You need to let go of that sin and lay hold of Jesus Christ, and he'll forgive you. I'm sorry? 
That's just it. It's not a, it's, it's not entirely a Christian thing. Sin entered into the world from the beginning. Adam and Eve sinned from the beginning, and that is what brought this world into a state of moral depravity. How do you know you, whatever, anything you believe is true, Brandon? You have no basis of truth, and you can't know anything. How can you judge the Bible to be true or false? You have no justification. His, history. How do you know your reason about that is valid and true, Brandon? Because I, because I, because I. You're invoking your reason, you're validating your reason. You're an officially circular argument. You, so therefore you have no justification to know anything. And that's exactly what the Bible says. Because what you do know, the very first thing you do know is that God exists. Science says... Science... Brandon, science says nothing. Science says nothing. Scientists do, and scientists come in two forms, male and female. Which science do you invoke, invoke as your absolute standard of truth? Can you give me a name? So is there any, was there any, was there any absolute truth before Stephen Haw Hawkins existed? No. So there's no such thing as absolute truth. Is it absolutely true that there's no absolute truth, Brandon? rejecting God, Adam. So we're not saying this just to embarrass you. And we're telling you the truth, Brandon. Yeah, when the Bible says the fool has said in his own heart there is no God. It doesn't say the PhD says that there is no heart. It doesn't say the wise man. It says the fool, and that's the moral God charge. That's an indictment on the sinfulness of your heart. That you would stoop so low and say in your heart that there is no God. That's the greatest sin of all, Brandon. You know what God is? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, darling, but the, oh, the God is the old planet. No, that's not what the Bible says. Oh, the God. Who read that? So Who read? God wrote the Bible. They are nooses. God breathed. You don't believe that, ma'am? Why is the Bible not true, ma'am? Because we can get out of the God wrote it. I've already told you. All scriptures breathed out by God. What's that? No, the, the word dinosaur wasn't coined until 1841. They're called Leviathans and Behemoths. You can find them in Job. Drag on. Okay, ma'am? God created all things in six days. And the earth is very, very old. It's between six and 10,000 years old. God created the heavens and the earth in six days. But man is both evolution because men do not want God in the equation of their life. Why? Because God is holy. God commands men and women to leave the sin that they love. And the Bible says that is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world, but people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. That's why you guys don't want the gospel, because God is light. And suddenly, suddenly you cannot cling to your sin because God is light. And you oppose God because of the love of sin. The Bible says he who sins is a slave to sin. But Jesus Christ came to the world to set the captive free. Hallelujah. He who the Son, amen, sets free is free indeed. He can set you free from the bondage of sin. Because you're enslaved to it. You cannot set yourself free. Only Jesus Christ can set you free. And you must come to God in his terms. And Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is a changed mind. It's turning you want love, right? Your affections are changed. All the things that you love, the getting drunk, the, 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 the committing idolatry, adultery, any sexual morality, right? Coveting. All these things are sins against God. But God will give you a new heart. He'll take out your heart of stun and crush your very being and give you new life. And that's what regeneration is. A man must be born again. Without a new birth, you cannot enter heaven. And that's a miracle of God. It's a man crying out to God for forgiveness. Pleading with God to give you new life. That is how man and the truth are saved. As the man, you see there are two men that approached God. Jesus gave the story. There was a religious man, let's say a pope. Okay? Since you were pope standing before God. And then a Pharisee appeared, walked behind this religious man, and the religious man is telling God, I am not like this man. I pray every day, I give alms, I give to the poor, I am not like him. And then this man behind him was a tax collector, the lowest of all lows in his day. He could not lift up his head. He was pounding his chest saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner! A sinner! He cried out to God, I'm a sinner!
Jesus. Jesus said that man went home justified. The man who confessed his sin before God. And that is what you must do. You must humble yourself before God. Confess your sin. And God will save you. You confess and forsake your God. You confess and forsake your sin. God will be merciful to you. Because you know you sinned against God. Every person here and all the men and women on the face of the earth since creation knows that they have sinned against the one true creator of the universe. And our God is saved. Your conscience condemns you. The heavens declare the glory of God and condemn you. 2,000 years ago in history, Jesus Christ came to the world and condemned you. So you're without excuse. You must go to the cross of Jesus Christ. There is no sin that the blood of Jesus Christ will not cleanse. Why do you sin? We don't have free will. You're enslaved to your, you're enslaved to your nature. The Bible says by nature you're a child of wrath. The dog barks because of the dog. You sin because you're a sinner. I'm sorry? Well, we're created in God's image. Yes, but the, but the problem is you read Genesis 5, 3, then we were born in the likeness of Adam. We inherit the sin of Adam. So we follow his ways. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us to our own way. We follow the sad we follow the sad pattern of Adam. We rebel against God every day of our lives. But God is patient towards you, my friend. You're still alive, breathing the air that God has given you. He fills your lungs with air today. He's pleased to keep you alive, although you're in rebellion towards him. Hallelujah, God is gracious and merciful. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So you're without excuse. That is why we're here. If you had excuse, the worst thing that could happen is for us to preach the gospel to you. Then you have an excuse. That's why Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel. I'm from California. My friend here is from Canada. We have other brothers from the States, and we have local brothers. We come here in love. We are forgiven much. Therefore, we love much. Well, yeah, we have Dale McAlpine. We have Adrian right here. Dale McAlpine, Adrian. Jim Hamilton from Scotland. There are some. It doesn't matter who's preaching. What matters is the content of the message. And we're preaching the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen? And we're preaching this word. The word of truth. The sum of your word is truth, O oh Lord. Every word of God proves true. Jesus Christ is truth. For there is no way, no life, and no truth apart from Jesus Christ. So today, bring your sin to the cross. All of it. And he will wash it clean by his precious blood. He will welcome you as a child of God, as a son of God, as a daughter of God. And you will experience the joy of everlasting life. Where no eye is seen, no eye is heard, nor the heart of man. Imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. Seek the Lord Jesus Christ where he can be found. What is it? What is it? Where do you get this from? Where do you get this from? No, I'm not joking. We're talking sense. No, I don't. You're taking her. Let's go. 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 Let's go.